I am certain that the number one PhD student quality that professors are looking for in their PhD students is tenacity. Tenacity is persistent in maintaining, adhering to, or seeking something valued. Now, tenacity is the thing that will get you through your PhD. You can have talent, you can have the smarts, you can have everything, but if you do not have tenacity, you will not be able to get through some of the hardest moments of your PhD. In the early stages, you don't need to be so tenacious. You can just kind of like cruise through, you can kind of do your experiments, but there's a point where things are going wrong, where you need to be persistent, where you need to adhere to a plan, all of that is going to get you through the later stages of your PhD, where arguably most of the work is going to be done, where most of the challenges are going to be faced, and you're going to be in so deep to the PhD, you're going to start wondering why you even decided to do this in the first place. In those moments, it's not going to be how well you feel, it's not going to be uh, your cleverness, your grades that are going to get you through, it's going to be your tenacity. The ability just to put your, your head down, your bum up, and get it done. And then we've got seeking something valued. Seeking something valued is very much up to you, how you value the PhD. Is there enough value in this for you to be persistent? And that is what I think a lot of people need to get in their minds before a PhD, is working out what they value about doing this and having that at the front of their mind when they want to give up. So, tenacity, number one. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Yes, you guessed it. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the perfect PhD daily schedule, how to write the perfect abstract, and more. It's exclusive content available for free on that newsletter, so go sign up now. Honesty and integrity. The PhD system generating research, even sort of reporting, it is all a big honesty system until it gets to peer review where all the rubbish is kind of shaken out by the neck. Now the thing is, is that when you're reporting to your PhD supervisor, they need to be able to trust what you are saying. Honesty goes a long way and it can be stretched a little bit. You know, when you're doing those experiments, when you're sort of researching, where are the limits? of honest and ethical behavior. And in research, it can kind of sometimes get a little bit blurry because yes, you found something, but have you found it only once? Have you been able to reproduce that result? All of that really is about being able to communicate honestly, openly, and with integrity to your PhD supervisor. When I had uh, master's students, the, the last thing I would want them to do to me is lie about a result they achieved or got because they wanted to impress me or because they wanted to look better than they actually were. And then we can go on this whole sort of like uh, this whole line of inquiry and then find out that what they were talking about was rubbish and it was based on lies. So honesty and integrity are so important, not only to the fundamentals of research so that you can build a, a story, research results, PhD thesis, but ultimately if you cannot trust a PhD student, there is no way that you can really sort of like continue that professional working relationship without double guessing everything they say. So honesty and integrity is so important. I used to say to my honest students when they come to me, the first thing is I don't care the outcome of results, just report the results. You doing the work is the thing. It is not about getting the best result, it's about getting the true result, and that is so very important. So honesty and integrity is something that a PhD supervisor absolutely loves because it just sort of is the lubricant to the to the research process. Work ethic is another PhD student quality that cannot be understated from a PhD supervisor's perspective. Now, I have been in a load of research environments across multiple universities and PhD students are the hardest to kind of motivate, particularly in their second and third year and having an internal kind of work ethic. Now, we're not talking about hustle culture or hustle porn here, right? We're not talking about like working yourself to the bone, doing something to the point of exhaustion, staying in the lab or the office until midnight all the time. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is the ability to turn up as if is this is like a job, like as if your PhD research is a job. 
Now, sometimes that involves coming in a little bit earlier. Maybe it involves working a little bit on the weekends. Now, I remember during my postdoc, I had to reflux some chemicals, some carbon nanotubes overnight, and uh, I had to go and visit it every sort of six hours or something just to top up, check safety, all that sort of stuff. And my girlfriend said to me, you've got a very weird job when she came in and saw what I was doing. And so, yeah, sometimes you have to go in on the weekend. Sometimes you have to stay a bit later, but the ability to kind of like manage your own time get up, turn up at a reasonable time, leave at a reasonable hour, do that day in, day out for years at a time. That is what work ethic is really about. And uh, just, you know, putting in the effort slowly, steadily, and when you need to, I think is something that is valued by a lot of PhD research supervisors. And like I said, it's not about hustle culture. It's not about hustle porn. It is about just doing consistently. As a supervisor, I loved to see enthusiasm. Enthusiasm for the work they were doing, the results they were gathering, and actually telling people about what they were doing. Now, this is so important. Enthusiasm, just a dab. Like, if this was a recipe, this would be like the drop. <coughs> COVID, <coughs> last little bit of COVID cough. This would be the little tiny sort of drop of food coloring that just gives a nice little sort of hue to what you do. <coughs> oh God, <coughs> I'm feeling better. <coughs> it doesn't sound like it, but it's like a nice little hue, a nice little kind of golden uh, glow over everything. It helps with the daily grind. It helps with everything. It helps with the interaction with your PhD student. If they are just a little bit enthusiastic or can just sort of put the best side forward when things are going wrong, that is really, really valuable. As a PhD supervisor, so many things are rubbish throughout the day. Admin work, university demands, other issues, you know, like peer-reviewed papers, doing free work for journal articles, um, peer-reviewing for journals that actually get millions and millions of dollars, but you see nothing and you're doing it for free. Enthusiasm from a nice PhD student who comes in really brightens up your day and it is great. Enthusiasm goes a long way. This list wouldn't be complete without critical thinking skills. And I think one of my favorite definitions of critical thinking skills is from a 1987 conference on critical thinking and education reform. It goes like this. Critical thinking is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. Ah, oh, what a brilliant, explanation of critical thinking skills. And I think that if you can live your PhD student life and research life by that definition, you will not go too far wrong. It is dense, but it captures everything you need to know. And then it goes on to say that in its exemplary form, it is based on universal intellectual values that transcend subject matter divisions, clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, rel relevance, sound evidence, good reasons, depth, breadth, and fairness. Here, the one thing I love about this is that as a PhD student, you are bringing sort of experience. You're bringing your own emotional sort of um, uh, feelings about certain things. Now you can wrap that up into your research because here, I love that it just says, um, that it's generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication. Those aspects of doing a PhD really fall all together and will make your PhD much, much better. So when we mean critical thinking skills, I think that is what the perfect definition for a PhD student is. And finally, communication skills are so important. Now, I'm not talking about communication here in between a supervisor and a student. Of course, that's a given. That one is valued highly by every single PhD student supervisor and professor. But I think there's an important part of communication skills that goes undervalued and underappreciated. And that is communication with 
others. There's a point during uh, any sort of research project where a PhD student needs to communicate with other people to collaborate. And what you're doing as a PhD supervisor at that point is you are putting your group on show, up for judgment. And if you have a PhD student that puts confidence in the people they're speaking to, that is absolutely invaluable. They become like an ambassador for your research. They become a spokesperson. They become the face of your research when you put a PhD student out in the world. And you need that PhD student sort of representing your research and their research area incredibly well, but also fill the audience, fill the people they're communicating with, with confidence. And I think that's probably the only reason I went as far as I did in academia is because I was able to enter a room full of people and sort of convince them that it was exciting, that I was doing good work and that it was important. And I feel like, you know, without those skills, I would have left academia way before, or maybe even just like pushed out of academia way before I actually decided to leave. So communication skills, I always say, it's not about the information you impart, it's not all about the sort of words you can spill into people's faces as they're sat there. If you get really close, you can spit at them. No, it's not about that. It is about making them feel a certain way. If you can fill the audience with confidence in what you're saying, it goes a really, really long way. And great communication skills from a PhD supervisor's uh, perspective is what that is all about. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about the highly valued PhD student qualities that every single PhD student supervisor and professor likes. Yes, there we are, I got there. All right then, let me know in the comments what you would add to that. Do you agree, disagree? I love reading your comments and I read every single one of them. Um, and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the PhD survival guide and the ultimate academic writing toolkit that are together at the moment for a bundle special price. Go check it out and uh, yeah. I'll see you in the next video.